can no longer allow another white person to regulate my thoughts. I can no longer allow another white person to regulate my emotions. I can no longer allow another white person to regulate my soul. I can no longer allow another white person to regulate my blackness. Last Friday, yeah, last Friday, I was aggressively pulled over, pulled over by a white female officer. A white female officer interrupted my morning run for coffee. I say aggressive because she chirped her siren, ran up on my bumper, flashed her lights, and pointed me over to the curb, interrupting my morning run for coffee. I say aggressive because she got out her car, unbuttoned her holster, and looked at my face, gazing through my rearview mirror. And then she asked me, do you know why I stopped you? Now in my mind, I say, it must be because I'm black. But because my mama taught me to hush and comply when addressing an officer of the law, I'm supposed to say, not so boss. I sure don't know what it is I done did to start all of this here trouble. And again, in my mind, I say, damn, why didn't I get my weave done yesterday? Maybe this pullover would have been easier, but because the Supreme Court just said my hair don't matter, the Supreme Court just said my culture don't matter, the Supreme Court just said my race don't matter. So contrary to what you heard, this black life don't matter either. So again, in my mind, I hear my mama's voice. Girl, no sudden movements. It's time to pronounce your E's and R's. It's time to put on my best black face so I don't catch a case. So I slowly, oh so slowly, pull my curls back into order. I guess my inappropriate hand gesture set her off because it makes her bark through my window. License and registration. Pause. Bitch, ain't that sentence supposed to end with please? See right here? This part right here? This is where I realized. Where I realized I was tired of being afraid. I was tired of not being seen. I was tired of not being heard. I was tired of putting on a facade and using my nine to five work voice to improve my likability as if my blackness is something to be embarrassed of. I'm tired of catering to someone who don't live in my hood, don't care about my hood, don't give nothing to my hood but pain and misery. And every other day like a vulture, you prey on my hood. Denying us of our dignity, depriving us of our income and to ultimately malign, marginalize and homogenize our identity. But today, Yes, Lord. Today, I can no longer allow another white person to regulate my blackness. Pause. Shit's about to go down. So today I decided not to play the game. Today I decided I wasn't going to act the same. Today I decided that all this motherfucking trouble over a seatbelt wasn't the real reason you pulled me over. You pulled me over. Drove up on my bumper. Flash me with those lights, chirped me with that siren, put on those shades, yes, those motherfucking shades, profiled me, stereotyped me, Eric garnered me, Michael Brown me, Sandra blanded me, only to try to ensure that this black person knew their place, that this black person knew their space, that this black person knew their race. But today, yes, Lord, Today I decided, yeah, I made up my mind. I would straighten up my spine, wipe that smile off my face. I would stand in defiance. See, I can no longer allow another white person to regulate my blackness. Pause. Insert rest in bitch face. So I shine my rest in bitch face while I pump my gas. I gleam my resting bitch face while I get my coffee. I glow in my resting bitch face while I, while I, while I, wait, bitch, why are you looking at me like that? Why are you back on the radio? Why are you making this $50 waste of my time? Anything more than you fucking with my mind. The way you gritting, you think I had a toy gun or I was about to run or I was selling a loose one. I mean, we all understand it's reasonable to shoot a black person for selling cigarettes, but come on. It was just a motherfucking seatbelt. So before you escalate, 
before you overstate. Look into my eyes. Look into my soul. Look into the pain of having to deal with this nonsensical execution of authority to subjugate a sister into submission for the sole purpose of advancing your twisted sense of evangelical Anglican law and order. You still don't see me. So while you sneer at me with a blind numbness, I won't flinch. I won't be afraid, and I damn for sure cannot allow another white person to regulate my blackness. Pause. Is there a problem, officers? Wait, wait a goddamn minute. Is that two more patrol cars pulling up? Why they got their weapons drawn? I ain't got no warrants. I ain't got no felonies. I ain't got no cases. Oh, I forgot. I left my seatbelt off and turned my blackness on. I guess my rustin' bitch face made three armed policemen fear for their lives. Be in fear of this 110 pound black woman. Be petrified. Be terrified. And continue the genocide. Also, you could justify this excessive use of force, this ex excessive use of intimidation, all to secure this hostile situation from a black girl who refused to allow another white person to regulate her blackness. Pause. Can somebody let me know when CVS starts selling a can of race lift? I'm tired. So damn tired. How the hell did I get so tired at 20? But you know what? After today, I can definitively say that I will no longer allow another white person to regulate my blackness. But the only problem is, it seems I forgot that if I don't regulate or if I don't moderate or if I don't contemplate or meditate or castigate or pontificate or negate or mitigate or denigrate my blackness. My blackness will only be something for you to commiserate. But what's even sadder, what's even more tragic is that every single black person watching this already knows my fate, already knows my mistake, and already knows the madness for no longer allowing another white person to regulate my blackness. Pause. Insert my mama crying. Crying at my funeral. Crying in her blackness. They shot her. Oh my God, they shot her. Oh my God, they shot her. Oh my God, they shot her. Mama, they shot her. Oh my God, they shot her.